and welcome. My name is Ryan O'Rourke and I hope you enjoy. If you have any questions along the way, please feel free to send me a message here on YouTube or on my Facebook page. I'd be more than happy to help out. And if you want to share your work with me, please feel free to leave a link to that or send me a picture. I'd love to see it and help you in any way that I can. All of that being said, let's get into it. Greetings. So today to begin, we are working with a waterfall here. And what you're looking at right now looks like a myriad of oddly placed steps, doesn't it? When what these really are, are rock ledges in which the water is going to fall from and onto. So it would crash on this one, it's falling from that one, it's falling here, crashing on this one, falling here, crashing on this one, and of course, it'll pool in different areas. So I'd advise you to begin by simply drawing a myriad of randomly placed little lines, and that'll be your rock ledges. Now, they can be fairly straight, horizontal, like I have them here. However, they can bend, they can be completely angular. It's all up to you. It's completely your choice. But just ensure that you have a good amount of rock ledges for the water to fall from and onto. Now, we're going to begin with a black background, just because I find that very easy in something. Here, we're going to have to do a lot of layering. Um, but anyways, I'm going to start on the rock ledges here. So I'm going to grab a good amount of brown, a little bit of white, and a little bit of black, mix them together on my palette. Perhaps I'll get a second camera set up there so you can watch me mix it. Um, but we're, we're just figuring this all out. So right now, I'm just picking those areas and I'm applying dabbed white with brown and black mixed in. Now you can use various colors, it'll probably change depending upon the day and the atmosphere, but this is a fairly generic choice to pick. And there's nothing wrong with generic here. Now I've decided that I'm going to make the top of these ledges much brighter than the bottom, because the idea is that the light's coming down from whichever angle. I guess in this painting we will have it coming this way. So the light's going that way, we just remember with a little arrow. Sound good? Um, so anyway, but the ledges will probably jet out a little bit and then they'll go back in. So the light's hitting the top of them and then it's kind of falling back down below. So it'll be a little bit darker at the bottom of each ledge. So I'm kind of blending it down with water so you get a gradient from a proper pigment. It's very uh, opaque and then you go down something very see-through down here at the bottom. Now, these are rocks, and they're organic. They don't have to be perfect. Right now, in fact, I have a real glare on my canvas because of the water. I'm having issues telling what I'm doing, but it's not really stopping me from doing what I am because I know that it's all going to be okay. Because A, it's a painting, you can always fix it. But B, because rocks are supposed to look organic and messy and fairly random. So having that isn't an issue. I'm dabbing it on occasion to get a little bit of a changed up, harder look, and then I'll blend out various areas as well. And all of these, again, water is going to be going on to and then falling off of. So again, these are ledges. You can make them look more like that by putting in little vertical lines going down, perhaps those are pieces of rock themselves, and boulders in between various areas. So all of this at this point is just rock. Because of course waterfalls don't fall on grass normally because the water disrupts that. Instead they fall on rock, so that's what we're putting here. Just a bunch of rock. And you'll notice that I'm scraping it downwards, again, being very messy, doing some dabbing. But with the initial layer, I normally like to use a lot of water. Just in case it doesn't go right, I can blend it out very easily. And then later, I'll add more color. 
The first layer is generally darker, so it's more of my dark brown, and then eventually I add in more white like I did up there. But right now, we're just making it very dark, very brown, blending it all in. I'm trying to keep the top edges much harder and the bottom edges blending in more. Again, this is because of how the light hits the rocks and the waterfall. Again, being very random, creating more of my hard surfaces here, less soft. And normally when you get with the brighter colors or incorporate white here, that's when you need to be more cognizant of the sharp areas. But again, we're just blending down and eventually it'll look fairly similar to what we ended up with right there. Now, these are rocks on a waterfall. So most of them will actually be covered up. However, you put them here to A, organize their thoughts and B, some of this water that's going to be falling, it's going to be fairly transparent and see through. So you will see some of these rocks in the end. So they are important to fully develop to which the point you desire. See, I'm starting to connect some. They are vertical lines and they are stairs, but at different points, I am trying to move them together and create amalgamations of shapes. Now this white might be too bright because we want our water to be a bluish white. And if our rocks take up a lot of that white themselves, then the water doesn't pop out. So you have to make sure that things that are in the background, such as these rocks, are fairly subdued and muted colors. That's why we have the black in the background. We're mixing white with the brown. We don't want it to be a very rich, pungent brown. We want it to be subdued. We want it to be in the background. And so here, again, I'm just trying to blend things out. If the white gets to be too much, I can take a very watery version of the brown and just go on top of it, subdue it a little bit. You don't have to do this. It's a personal preference. And really with painting, I know this is a tutorial and it is meant to inform. You don't have to do anything. There isn't a wrong way to paint. If you're working hard, if you're enjoying, really if you're enjoying and you're creating, then you're doing all you're supposed to be doing when you paint. You, you have achieved that. It doesn't matter if you end up with a circle on the page, a square, or a mess of paint. You have achieved what painting is supposed to do, and that is creating an enjoyable time, something fun. Now, I have the majority of my rock ledges worked in here. And something I want to do is incorporate greenery. Next, we're going to start incorporating greens and shrubbery in various areas. I'm using water to kind of mark in different ideas I have for it. Because it's black, it shows up fairly easily. And again, the water will take out all of the grass, but what it will create is various mosses and different growth around the rock. So right now, I'm going in with the green. I'm using a fairly rough brush. Now you notice that it's supposed to have one end that is fairly linear and the other is thick. However, this brush is old, it's been broken up, and so it doesn't really retain its shape anymore, and that's fine. I want it to be fairly messy. I'm just dabbing in different areas of green. Now, I didn't mix the green with white or anything else. I just want this green to mix in with the black of the canvas. I want it to be very subtle. I don't want it to stick out. The idea here is that this is just a little bit of moss or plants or shrubbery growing around the waterfall. Now again, I'm using a fair amount of water up here. Here I didn't and it kind of sticks out more than it should. There we go, there's another example. Sticking out more than it should. And so I'm just going to wet my brush 
large amount, go back in, and with a dabbing motion, blend it outwards. And hopefully, this makes it slightly more clear. So we're just moving it all around. Don't put it everywhere, but incorporate it on occasion. Now, I do have all of this black everywhere, and black doesn't really have any depth, or not as much as you think, um, subconsciously speaking. Um, but to put this simply, you probably want to make it a really dark brown or a really dark gray to add depth. So that's what I'm actually going to do. I'm going to take a good amount of black, I'm going to take a little bit of white, I'm going to take a little bit of gray, brown <laughs> words. And I'm going to work it in. But see, that's very bright. It's not what I wanted. And that's okay, because you know what? We all make mistakes in painting. And they're often fairly easy to remedy. So I see we have something much more gray going on there. And through various types of strokes, we can apply more rock formations which is really what we want. We want this all to feel like very rocky steps, which water has come through, dragged everything around. I'm not sure if it's showing up on camera extremely well, because it is very subtle, and you want it to be very subtle. It's a, almost a black. It's not quite, but it's as close as you're going to get to it and it might have a little bit of color in it. That color can depend upon the foliage, the atmosphere, the time of day, myriad of things. So again, something that you can't really get wrong. Just have fun with it, try different things, explore different color variations that you like. And now we have the area in which our water is going to fall. Now, we want it to go from different areas, and we want different areas to blend. But something that's really important, before we get too excited, we want to wait for this to dry. Because if it isn't dry, then our white paint is going to mix with the greens and the browns, and then you're going to have a mess just running down it. We want a clear stream of water. So we're going to wait for that to dry, and then I'm going to come back to it after. Now, I'm using this brush here. Initially, it was very straight on one end, very thick on the other. However, I cut increments out, so it's much like a fan brush. I have a tutorial to this on my channel, and I'll put a link in the description. But essentially, the point here is that instead of making one stroke, I make five or six. So it saves me a lot of time in the long run. So now I'm dipping it in white, making my brush fairly wet, I'm picking an area here, and then I'm applying the paint. Now I like to start at the top with an area and then I bend it into a hook and then I go down. So there's a slight bend at the top just to show that the water is falling, and then I have the waterfall. and it can fall that way or that way. The hooks will help you add dimension to it. So again, it's looking very streaky and that's fine because it's your first layer. You're just getting an idea of where you want it all to be and where you want it to go. And you don't have to use this type of brush. For this demonstration, I'll also use this one. It's not cut. Thin end, thick end, very cheap. I think I bought it at the dollar store. Um, I try to make all of the tools in these tutorials extremely cheap, just so everyone has them accessible. Um, so anyway, here again, just doing this. It actually gives it a less stringy look when you use a brush like this, when it doesn't cut. I'm trying to make it brightest at the top. The 
and dragging it down. As I get to the bottom, I try to relieve pressure on the brush itself. And here I'm just randomly picking areas and I'm dabbing it in. I'm trying to create variations in the water because it's all not going to fall from the same rocks on the same way. And it's going to be varying. So to achieve that, just pick various areas and you have fun with it. And then you connect it all later. This is a large drop. I'm going to present it as a large drop. Now it'll look fairly messy at this point, and that's because we haven't started horizontally connecting any of the water. However, we'll do that as soon as this patch is done. Now you can see here that I did it a lot lighter than there. I just wanted to show you that you can create a real variance in how you do this. Um, so that's using a lot less paint and just kind of roughly dragging it on the canvas. There we are with our finger painting again. Never forget that is always a great skill. You may have learned it in kindergarten, but that's because they want to start you off right. Now I want to start connecting these pools of water. And so I'm going to put a little bit of actual water on my brush with some white. And I'm going to start moving it around the rocks horizontally, connecting various areas. And they're not all going to show. You want to leave various parts out. However, a good portion of it should be connecting. And it'll help you add in more falling areas along the way and create different pieces of your waterfall. We just took out the majority of the rock that we had before, but again, the rock really was a planning piece, helping us figure out how we wanted to do things. And it did that. It served its purpose. And now we can really take over with the water. Now this doesn't even have to particularly be a nighttime scene, even though it's pretty much all in black. We can really add color to it after. The idea here was just to make it quick and easy to show you the techniques of the waterfall themselves. So again, we're just picking different shelves of rock and moving down them with white paint. You can mix blue in here, you can mix green in there. And because we're not using too much paint, because it is a bit watered down, you can still see things underneath it. And that's important. I'm trying to keep different areas more and less opaque than others. In the process, creating a little bit of diversity, ensuring that it has depth and it's not flat. Having a flat painting is really one of the worst things that you can do. So you always want to think about creating more depth, how you can create more organic shapes, different patterns. Now here, I did a lot of miniature shelves, so all of the water is falling. Not very far get a little more detail work when you do that. You have the larger falls there, and then you have the little ones here. And I'm trying to use what paint is left on my brush here, just scraping it on, because I want it to be fairly see-through. I don't want to see the rocks that I had down here, because the water won't be as powerful and overtaking here, so you should really be able to see it more. So again, now that we have all of our water falling, we are going to take white and start developing shelving. Following different lines of the rock, blending it down into the streams. Now, 
Now you notice that it looks very dark in the background here, and that could have been avoided if we did a much lighter shade of brown. However, I didn't really want that. I'm thinking of making this a nighttime scene where maybe I'll have a moon up here, dark sky, some trees everywhere, there and there and there. But the whole idea of the waterfall itself is to create these stair ledges and then have the water fall. You want to create it in a hook and then you drag it down. You apply it in various areas, all of which fairly watered down, so it's partially see-through. And then you end up with something like that. Now, an added fun little piece you can do is creating splashing water. And with that, I'm just taking that same brush and I'm picking an area where it falls and I'm dabbing different areas. The water is falling right there. It's bouncing up. It's creating splashes. It's creating splashes here too. So I'm kind of lining wherever the water is hitting with all of these. And it will generally happen on the ones that are falling much more than little ones because water that's only falling that far probably won't render big splashing effects, right? You can blend it in, create much more white effects. It would probably be the brightest area and it might even be a little misty or foggy. So adding in all of that really isn't an issue. You can play with it in a lot of different ways. I hope that helps. And if you enjoyed this, if you would like to see more, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And what really helps me is if you share it on one of your social media platforms. You don't have to, um, by, by no means should you feel like you need to. I'm just saying, um, if you do decide to do that, it would be very much appreciated. And I do hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. This was actually suggested by a subscriber who wanted to know how to paint varying waterfalls. And I hope you enjoy. I have more tutorials on my channel. If you want something specifically painted, let me know and I will work on doing a tutorial. I thank you for your time with me here today. I am rambling on more yet again. That seems to be a theme in my um, tutorials. I do apologize. But again, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you have a wonderful day and take care. Thank you so much for watching. I truly hope you enjoyed. And again, if you have any questions, if you got stuck along the way, please feel free to leave me a comment or send me a message on my Facebook page. Also, if you just want to share your work with me and get a little critique out of it, please feel free to send it to my Facebook. I'd be more than happy to look at it with you and talk about your work. And I'd love to see it as well. So thank you for watching and take care. Well, we have reached the end of the video and I truly hope you enjoyed and that you've learned something. I hope that you can take even a little piece from this and incorporate it within your art and have some fun with it. Now, all of that being said, if you have any questions regarding the tutorial or you'd like me to critique your work or go through it with you, please feel free to leave me a comment down below. I'd be very happy to help. And if you want more of an immediate response or you'd like to share a picture of your work, please feel free to add me on Facebook. I have a link in the description of this video and you can add me there, ask me questions, and I'd be incredibly happy to help you and walk you through whatever you are working on. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, if you've enjoyed this tutorial, A, I'm very happy. B, please hit that like button and the subscribe button. It really does help me grow this little art community and I'm just, I'd be incredibly appreciative if you did. I'm going to release videos weekly and I just hope you have a wonderful day. So take care and again, thank you for watching.